Uh, just here waiting for this with bated breath. I'm all shaky and sweaty and... I've, I've, never, I've never been interviewed for anything before and uh, I just got fucking bedheaded and I'm all... <laughs> so, so you're such a stand-up person. Every job ever, you've just walked in and they're like, you know what? I've seen your stuff. You're in, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, I've got every job I've applied to, so... <laughs> mullet, don't drop the cam. So I've got to ask then, which one of us is mullet? Is that good? Is there, are you mullet? Yeah. Probably. Ooh, I can rock that. I, I dig that, man. I can get right down on that. Yo, so what has the weekend been up for you, to you man? Like, what, what have you been up to this weekend so far? You've been hanging out, creating, working? Uh, for the most part, just uh, working on some uh, some little, little, what are they called? Like, Omake figures, the little uh, Keshis and stuff for uh, release. Nice, um, man. But yeah. I've been using air dry clay, so I've been waiting for that to like fully uh, dry before I mess with it or anything. Nice, fair, yeah. And then I just wanted to double check too, because I noticed afterwards the rainbow yawn. Apparently, I was like whispering. Can you hear me, okay, man? Yeah, I can hear you fine. There he is, sick, sick. Um, now I've got to also kind of ask. I was creeping all over your page. You've been doing art like this since 2019, but not always the soft vinyl, man. You just seem to be like all over the place. Where did you start with all of this? Uh, so. The initial plan was actually soft vinyl, um, but I, I, I just jumped in head first. Uh, I bought in a bunch, like I bought a bunch of Sculpty, uh, extra firm, and I like sculpted this weird peyote monster thing because I, I was just I was just super enthusiastic about it. You know, uh, I didn't know jack shit about soft vinyl. I didn't know how much it cost to begin with. I didn't know the limitations uh, when it came to like undercuts and all that, because if you got like really deep undercuts, what happens is it'll just like tear the vinyl uh, when they try to pull it out. So I post this on like some Reddit thing and I'm like, hey, this is my new toy, blah, blah, blah. try to get it produced. And then some dudes are like, yeah, you should probably uh, try it. Like, like he was giving me pointers. It was just kind of like, hey, uh, try again, because like uh, this has got real deep undercuts. Like this, he just told me everything. And then when I look back on it, 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 it looks like a lump of crap. Like honestly, it was like my first attempt at sculpting and it was, like for me to just immediately think like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this in a vinyl, not knowing that it's gonna probably be like a couple grand just to produce that. And I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Yeah, no, you can't be expecting that now whatsoever. Um, no. Out of curiosity, like, so how, how do you just jump into an endeavor like that? I mean, in order to, to come up with that kind of a mass that and then invest in yourself like that? Uh, enthusiasm, just like, uh, just being super into the idea of it and just like enthusiasm because, uh, if I didn't have any of that work ethic or anything, I would probably wouldn't have continued. Initially, I got really bummed out, like with my first uh, resin castings and everything, because that's that's where I really started. Because I was like, oh, uh, vinyl is not attainable for me right now, so I might as well try uh, rubber casting, like Keshi resin and whatnot. Now you actually have a you drop like crazy, man. So from the time that these drop, you've dropped two more sets of yeah. these guys. Yeah. How do you just pop them out like that, man? So. Generally, what uh, what I do with vinyl is I buy a couple of colors in advance. So I have kind of like uh, some paint apps. I'll, I'll have them like already like set up and then some I'll just get a uh, random colors to try to test something out and see what comes out of it. Like I usually do a test paint and I either keep that or add that as a uh, as kind of like a chase figure or something. Nice, man. Yeah, I've noticed actually that most of your drops you'll actually have like a little variant that's just slightly different than all the other ones. What yeah. kind of drove that idea of doing a chase figure? Just well, experimenting? For, for the most part, it was just kind of like a, it's a thing I would kind of uh, see with one of my friends. Uh, he's in here right now, Mecha Ducky. He collects like all these blind box figures. So they always have chases and I always felt like it was fun to just add in a little, like, oh, you didn't get just the regular one. Unless of course you didn't want that one, then I guess it kind of sucks, but <laughs> otherwise, yeah, I feel like it's a fun idea. A little it's very a great idea, man. Honestly, like it, it's very uh, toy culture for sure. Look at all, like, dude, right down, like, this is all, like, okay, where do you decide to go with this type of packaging, man? That is insane, I love that. So, for that, I, I would always kind of see, like, uh, the weird little net things, like, in some some movie releases, but it's usually, like, uh, just, like, a bigger one-part figure or something, just, like, put in there, and I thought that was pretty fun, but, um, in, like, Mexican markets and all that stuff, you'll find, like, these little bags, or, I mean, when I grew up, you would find, like, uh, little bags with, like, candy and stuff, and then, like, toys, just, like, random shit, like, little army men, like, lollipops, caramels, all that crap. 
So I just took like my own spin on this pretty much. And then I figured I might give uh, Mexican candy some exposure, like a fun little extra. Right, yeah, cause, okay. So the first time I think I ever saw that was Fubi Loaf was sucking on a, like a roast chicken sucker or something. Yeah, the chicken pups. <laughs> <laughs> Man, okay, so out of curiosity, are you yourself then originally not from the States? Or, are you, or is this just really heavy in the area that you're from? Uh, in LA, like when I was younger, I used to see them a lot, like in LA. Uh, it would be like at, at liquor stores or like dollar stores, anything. Like, I don't see them too often now, but I would see them every once in a while. Just kind of like uh, shitty no-name candy, no-name toys, just like very like little, almost like giveaway bags. Like, but you'd pay like a couple bucks for them or something. Open this open. Okay. Yeah. Dude, I'm so sorry, man. I always feel so bad at the part of like trying to preserve all the dope art and stuff, and the, and like, okay. Yeah, no, that's that's my bad on that. I, I kind of did like a shitty uh, job of kind of like preserving the header card, like when it came to that. Oh, dude, no way, no way, no way, man. Because if anything, I'm gonna I, I tore a small hole. I'm gonna keep the I'm gonna keep the bag, man. I'm gonna stuff cool stuff in there going forward. So yeah. this is like an assorted bag of candy that you toss into like each each package as well. So like every package pretty much has that. Uh, I usually throw in some. Uh, some of those vintage soul rings, and then uh, if I have any other like uh, toys, I usually buy in bulk, uh, just so I could throw like a couple in there. But for now, it's just soul rings because I gotta get through with those. Dude, I was even actually seeing like, I, okay, I was talking to you about it when your drop happened. That you have like a very loyal fan base. You've got homies that like your stuff is usually just like gone. And then I was even seeing all the posts as the orders were coming in, and the amount of dudes that just had like the boing up all over the like all the rings from the orders, just every yeah. finger. Okay, so I dump it out on the table, make a bunch of noise. There we go. So, man, you just order all these in bulk. This cool little, like... Uh, uh, uh. Sorry, guys, I'm just going insane here. So, I don't know if you knew, man, like, I actually love, love, love candy. And, um... So, candy from other countries and sweets from other places. Like, what is even going on here? Is this, like, covered in curry? <laughs> it's like... So all of those with the red powder, that's just like chili powder. It's just straight chili powder. The mango ones and the watermelon ones usually have like a thicker layer of it. But like, for the most part, it's like, if you can handle spicy food, it's it's pretty decent. It's it's not super hot, but like, I feel like for the un uninitiated, it might be a little, like out of nowhere, like just spicy. Yeah, that'd be another level, man. Okay, so I'm gonna stop <laughs> focusing on the candy, because you've got some rad art in here, man. Now, do you, you paint these all yourself? From these ones, correct? Yeah, I just get the blanks and then uh, I have like uh, these paint masks for the face and eyes and then the rest is just free sprays, except for the back. I, uh, on the Hawaiian ones, I kind of experimented with a little paint mask for the back, but it ended up not working too well because uh, it, it just kind of broke apart. It was too too tight of a, of a fitting thing. I think I might need to get those made somewhere else or try again. Dude, okay, I'm gonna ask, <laughs> maybe this was unintentional, but there is something oddly sexual about about these little guys am i just a weirdo am i just totally out there um uh, uh it's supposed to be like a like a casa obake thing the little demon with the tongue out uh some people compared it to the little ogre guy with the tofu i forget his name uh, but the other guy i, I expected at least a comment or two that, that wasn't intentional. though it was not intentional but okay so with these ones here especially you did a double drop with these and i've been curious since the moment they dropped because you actually did um you painted these ones if i'm not mistaken and then you actually had a guest artist who actually did there was a set that was almost like banana yellowy um with just just eyeball highlights and such oh yeah that was uh i think it was the draculaser one the draculaser bootleg style paints um what i what i like doing is i like uh i like getting a guest artist every so often for like each color of vinyl so you'll see some pop up probably later um over time like whenever they decide to drop it there's there i think neil might still have some in his shop too he has a couple i was wondering okay yeah because i was wondering who it was i had seen somebody had a couple um from an older release but if it's neil ewing that would make a lot of sense yeah. dude you did a great job like i can't wait to like actually take some pictures and like zoom in on this because even like the nice blends between like the the red to the blue i love how you've given it like a little bit of a purple in there and the blank color is freaking sick man you chose a sick color for that where do you, uh, if you don't mind asking, where do you go for your soft vinyl? Um, I go to, uh, was it Mile High Sofubi? It's like a dude who, uh, pull, Paul, he pulls them in, uh, in Colorado in the U.S. Um, super cool guy to work with and 
pretty much it's just a pleasure to have him pull my vinyl. He's a good guy. He's, I, I can't like say enough good things about him. I saw um, our our little our Sippy Planet Sippy Maps. I saw that they actually use the same. Dude, I, how did you find out how to get vinyl in the states? A lot of people don't know that you can do soft vinyl in the U.S. Well, honestly, uh, I, I was just keeping an eye on uh, Mile High because I think he, I think he had like a booth at. What was it? I think it was either the yeah, it was the 2019 uh, Decon. I didn't find it, but I heard about it like after the fact, and I just kind of kept an eye on him because he was still setting up uh, like around that time. And then uh, I think a couple other guys have tried making like soft vinyl in the U.S. and it didn't really work out. So I was uh, like, uh, I, I kind of figured it was like a some sort of pipe dream or something. Like it, it was one of those things that just won't happen here. Um, but then you know I kept an eye on him, and then I, I I saw him pull his own figures, and I'm like, oh shit, okay, he has vinyl. Um, and I would see other people just kind of like slowly pump out like their stuff through him as well. And then after naps, I kind of like, you know, I hit him up about it and then I hit up uh, the man himself, you know, I, I emailed him, asked for the details and everything. And then uh, I, I pretty much just like from there, I gave him the, the sculpts, got the molds made and then got them pulled out. And then there we go. If you don't mind my asking, how long did it take from the time that you sent out sculpts? So the time that you received your first physical copy of your uh, art. So I think that that really varies because I think I think the turnaround time is usually like a, like if you if you have like a producer you like consistently go to if I'm right it should be like 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 a couple months like maybe three or four I want to say mine probably was stretched out to four or five months because of uh, I think it was like around the time when the pandemic started. So that just slowed down like the like everything uh, for a little bit, and then it just I, I think it was still like around the time where everything was still getting settled, like it was, everything was still new, it was still spiking cases and whatnot. Um, but as soon as I got them, I was just like, oh shit, okay. <laughs> I, I just got the test poles to like give the okay for the molds, and then after that, it was all gravy. I just started getting these guys pulled, so it was pretty cool. As soon as he got the molds back, it was pretty much like, hey, give me these colors. Can you color like Pantone color? So and so, can I get like twelve of these? Twelve of these, like I would just get like several colors, and then. Did you, uh, have, did you have like an art background before this? If you want to ask, because to just know what color of vinyl to get and then start experimenting like that, like. So, so, I pretty much just did the color vinyl thing uh, for trial and error, because I one of my friends told me uh, after I, I showed him the, the colors weren't exactly what I wanted, uh, the first run around. Uh, it was supposed to be like a, a flesh and a pink but the thing is I, I picked too light of a pink so it just looked like two different shades of flesh and i was all like okay and then uh my friend told me like yeah you need to kind of do like a trial and error because like how the colors look like on the pantone scale and all that um when they're actually like in the in the plastic it doesn't come out like exactly all the time so man like it's sick that you've actually done so much trial and error especially with like not many people just dive in and do a soft vinyl like like you already said like it, it costs a lot to do that man sorry yeah no I, I, like before this i had like little to no artistic background obviously i never painted i never sculpted i never i never really did anything um i would play music every once in a while i was in a punk band like when i was uh like middle school like middle school high school around that time <laughs> but it was it was very uh not the same uh home front for art as this is like it, it wasn't it just wasn't like the same uh way of expressing but I, I i don't know i picked it up really quick i feel um like i mean quick enough to just be like hey i'm gonna put all my money into this and it's worked out for me so far like i don't expect to sell out every time or anything either it's like whatever so i'm still gonna release more i just like being able to like give people like runs you know it's fun i like you weren't supposed to say anything because now everybody's watching this is gonna go steal all the green ones up <laughs> they're gonna be gone I need hey. to buy a bit more time. Come on, man. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, if they want to get them, go for it. And there's always going to be more of these guys. That's what I kind of wanted. Wanted them to be like fairly cheap, so I could just kind of keep pumping them out. People can keep getting them if they want them. If they like them, they can get it. If they don't, there it is. Man, I think like again, like I think you did a fantastic, fantastic like dude. Like the amount of different little details, considering that you're saying that you didn't have artistic background, like the little bits of um, like it's almost like a burgundy on the toes, like. Dude, you, you, you've gone all out on this, man. Even like the mixing with the oranges in there. Maybe I'm just crazy and don't know anything. <laughs> well, that's that's the, that's kind of like the thing with uh, soft vinyl and like vinyl paint. 
it's just like uh the colors are just like really really fun to paint with especially with an airbrush because like that with the vinyl paints you can kind of layer colors and whatnot you can mix them like it's just you you can have so much variety and everything and then i like to stick uh like kind of with the more vintage type sprays where it's just kind of simple um just blotches of color like I, I, like you can do that very masterfully I, I feel like there's some people who can do that very very well um like rampage or like uh mutant vinyl hardcore is like a good like a really good one when it comes to that because he kind of like he does pretty i feel like I, I don't know i might get dragged to this i feel like he does pretty simple like paint apps but he still does like sim like simple colors but very detailed in a way as well like extreme like he has his own little thing of like a lot of detail but it's still like really good colors like he just knows how to control the airbrush really well i'm glad you brought that up um i was asking my buddy uh Solon Boyd about it because admittedly man the drop you did of Drafty Laser had me so perplexed, only because I'm very, very, very new to the soft vinyl world. And I was looking at your Hawaiian paint-ups, and this is not a commentary at all about the other artists, but it just looked more plain. Um, like, you had really attacked it with a lot of color, he had attacked it with almost minimalistic, and, and that was like almost his style. So I was kind of going like, okay, why is that one fly so fast? And then I asked Colin Boyd about it, because I'd be like, do you mind kind of like let me know what what is this about the culture? Am I missing something? And he actually explained that like one of the things in soft vinyl that you celebrate the use of minimal to be able to like masterfully use minimal color to also accentuate like the proper parts of the form. So then once yeah. he explained that to me, it was so cool to see your drop and see like the two celebrations right next to each other, like the one that celebrates the use of a lot of the soft vinyl color, and then the one that actually celebrates the use of like the minimalistic style. So it was just like. <laughs> I don't know, man. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, it's it's just like uh, you can kind of you can kind of see the difference in like a lot of the vintage stuff when they would do a uh, brush color and compared to like airbrush color, because like uh, you'll you'll find a lot of like bootleg like patchy kaiju and everything with like a really really slapdash painted style, like just kind of like a uh, quick production, just like a swipe of red for the mouth or something. And then uh, like that's when you try to recreate it, I feel like that's pretty hard to do to capture perfectly. So. Uh, I was. I'm glad I was able to work with uh, Dracula Laser and get something painted by him like that because that's pretty cool. He's like one of my favorite artists, so it was a pleasure to work with him. Same thing like uh, when I would do uh, Keshi and whatnot. Uh, it was a pleasure to work with Doomto as well, and like most of the, like a couple other guys in the Fart Masters of the Universe, like that little co-op and whatnot. They're like all great guys. It's it's just a pleasure to just be welcome into like this art thing with like open arms. Uh, it resonates a lot easier. Vinyl, you, can't, you, you inch you inch your way in. Feels like. I don't know, man. Like you have quite the um, circle of big people. Like even when you were just kind of dropping some names there, and, you're, and like you're sitting there, just kind of like those are some good peers to have, to have in your side of the court for sure, man. Absolutely. So if, if you don't mind, I'm gonna fire off some, some lovely little magic card questions at you. How do you feel about that? All right, go for it. All right. What is your least favorite part of the entire process? The least favorite part. Um. It's gotta be just waiting for your stuff to come back from a factory. Cause that's like, uh, that's just months of waiting of like, oh, little to no update. Cause it's, it, it goes from like uh, here are the wax, like here are, here are the wax copies of uh, the, the stuff you sent in, you know? And from that, you just won't hear anything for months. And then they'll just be like, hey, the molds are done. We'll send you a test pool. And then you're like, oh shit, it's like Christmas. It's, they just send you a test pool. Um, I imagine if all goes well, yeah, if all goes well, you got the little holy grail right there. You got the you got the perfect test pulls. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can get some not so good test pulls. They might have to redo a mold. Uh, luckily, I haven't had that happen with the one, the two figures I produced so far. And uh, yeah, then after that, it's all gravy. Like you just wait, wait till the molds come to America and then start popping them out. Now, maybe I'm crazy and you already answered this. Did you decide to get both molds made at the same time? Like you decided to bang out both? Yeah, because um, I was just going to do the, the Goncha originally, just like the little little bread guy. And then uh, I figured I would like maybe like toss another one in there. So I just kind of, I, I just trying to brainstorm like, you know, what else could I add? What else could I add? So I thought like the Cocoa Pot, it looks weird. It looks alien. Just give it a foot or something. And then it's the Yokai Kaiju thing, you know? And I mean, it works. It looks it looks pretty all right. Like I, I, I like them. I feel like people are a fan of the... Uh, the dude on the left, but uh, I, I feel like the Cocoa Pot is kind of an underdog for me. Man, I, again, like you've done a lot on here. 
they're both sick. I, I, at this point, I don't even think I could imagine them not being together either, just because of how often I've seen them together in the drops and stuff. Uh, what would you say is uh, the favorite thing that you've made ever? So not even just out of soft vinyl, but sculpts, paintings, favorite thing you've ever made? Let's see. Probably like the first the first little Keshi thing I made because I was so like, I was just hyped that the the mold worked really well. Like everything just went right for that, like for the first couple of times up until I realized that um, like wait, wait, when you barely start molding stuff, nobody tells you molds have like a life of how many pulls you can get on them. Like you hear it here and there, but not too often. So after like the first couple, couple pulls, because it was a very like tight mold, I didn't really uh, like it worked, but I didn't really make it for it to be like used repeatedly. I had to like yank the little guys out. So after a couple times, the like it would just kind of ruin the mold. But it was like this little. I was trying to make this series of uh, like uh, Keshi, like little Keshi guys, kind of like muscle guys, except they were like. I guess the theme was like uh, a trilobite with like little boxing glove arm and, and like a uh, like he just looked really cool to me. He had like little barnacles and shit all around. But um, I just made one. And then there was another one that I was just kind of like, it, it didn't really work out, so I would give them out as freebies with orders. And then after that, that was pretty much it. But he was probably my favorite creation by far, just because of how, just how smoothly everything went. Do you like using the, the Keshi rubber uh, medium at all? It, yeah, I might go back to it, honestly, uh, for like a couple like little releases, but yeah, it's fun. Um, I, you just kind of have to vent it really well because uh, like resin, like you get bubbles from mixing, but with the Keshi rubber, what happens is like once you, once you mix it, like once it starts curing, it'll just bubble up. It'll start bubbling. Like it's not gonna foam up or anything, but it's like you could just see the little bubbles that form. So you gotta get that into a pressure pot. But it has like an hour cure time, so you should, you should be fine. But uh, that kind of doesn't work out for like some of my sculpts because it like it kind of catches the bubbles even then. But I, I just gotta figure out how to vent it well and everything. What's one of the weirdest things that you've ever made? One of the weirdest things that I've ever made. Uh, I think like the first couple of things I've released, like straight up when I barely got into the resin, um, it was like a frog, like a toad, with like with like a little. He had, he had like a little fucking like an incense jar thing. It was like a toad shaman thing. I mean, I, I thought it looked really cool because it was like it was, again, it was like one of my first attempts at sculpting as well. But it looked pretty decent. It almost was very orc-like and everything. I think I might still have one somewhere else. I might have, I might have given it to someone. And that thing might be long gone, but it was like, I don't know. It was cool. I was just like, this was, this was really out of like nowhere. Yeah, I didn't really have a style of what I wanted to make or anything, so I was just making random shit. And then that was one that really stood out to me as kind of like odd, semi cool. I like that, man. Did, and was that one made out of cashew rubber? Did you say? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, that was resin. It's because right. uh, before, before I found out. Uh, about like like you can actually do the catchy rubber thing. Um, I just made it over resin, so it was just like uh, that. And then another thing about resin, nobody tells you that that shit heats up. Nobody tells you that stuff heats up to cure. So I found that out the hard way when I melted like a, I melted like a little like, what is it like the shitty plastic cups that they give you like at parties and whatnot. So that, like I, I'm just like ready in the mold. I pour it, pour it down and everything. And I look back and I just see like the. A little cup bent like on its side just sinking and i'm like oh shit like i don't know what to do i just like immediately threw it in the garbage can i'm like it helps for the best and do you yourself have a favorite toy that you own uh yeah um pretty much it's uh it's three of them okay like uh i, I recently had gotten a target earth uh mogon like kugai thing like one of those one of those uh you want to Um, so for him, I like, I, I just didn't have any luck. Like you can't, you can't find these guys like at all. Um, I think you can find them on Mandrake every once in a while, but it's like really rare. And then they get like scooped up like immediately. Um, so I didn't have any luck finding them. And then someone tipped me off that there was one on eBay. And then they, you know, they said like, uh, well, try it out and then see if it works out. I'm like, okay. I, I think I, I bid once. Nobody else bid until like the final day someone tried bidding, but it was lower than mine. As soon as I did that, uh, the guy hits me up and says like, hey, my cat, my cat kind of dropped it and there's some scuffs on the back. So, uh, he sent me some pics and they were, they were, they weren't bad. They were just like little chips here and there, but on the back of the figure, and then I'm never going to see the back of the figure. Um, so it worked out in my favor in the end, but that's, 
one of my favorites, but I always come back to the uh, the pollution monster line from uh, I IKB. I think they had a reproduction by I think I think you pronounce it Hukokuro or something, but basically they were like uh, these knockoffs of like Hedora from like the 70s uh, called Hedorans. And then there's just like a weird crawling one. There's like a standing one. And then there's like one that they call Smash Face that just has like a smashed in face. Uh, I would grab those. They're like, yeah, they're, they're like, yeah, <laughs> they're like really, really uh, just covered by like other toys. Like they're they're in the back, but they're like they shine there. But those just stand out to me so much because it's just such a rough sculpt. It's just like it's just really fun to see. It's so textured. It's fun. And I think if I remember correctly, there was they were really popular. So then that kind of pushed. Uh, the toy factory manufacturers at the time to make a look like a Hedora figure because I think before then they didn't have that so it was kind of like a opening was it a filling in like a little empty space in the market. Um, what's like your number one tool that you have? Uh, my number one tool. Uh, honestly, just like these little these little silicone like nub things. Like, there's, there's, it's just kind of like these sculpting tools where one side is like sil like a soft silicone nub. And then the other side is like a little a little ball, just so you could go. For the most part, I, I use like the little ball to just kind of like punch in basic shapes. Then I kind of like smooth it over with a nub. Uh, but most recently, I've been using uh, wood carving tools because they kind of get like that. They kind of get like a a deep enough detail without making like a super deep undercut. Where like when it comes to vinyl, I feel. And then you'll find a couple makers using it as well. Um, I think I got the idea from Paul Kaiju. I think he's, he posted a video of him using like a wood cutting tool to make like those deep lines that he has on all his figures. So those have worked really well for me. And then I just kind of smooth it out with like a silicone tip or something. And then it works well. Uh, I'm gonna try it on the, what's it called? The air dry clay. So we'll see how that goes. Nice, man, I love it. Uh, let's see here. Who will be the two dead dinner guests that you can invite? You can bring two dead people in for dinner. Uh, that's random, I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> I like to throw some odd ones in there. I don't know. Everybody I look up to is kind of alive right now. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> How about we invite some living ones then? Why not? All right. We'll do, uh, we'll do Ronnie Coleman. Okay. The dude who squatted 800 solid ass pounds. And we'll do, uh, the animal from anti Nowhere League. I don't know either of those. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, yeah, you know what? Tony Soprano. Yeah, the actor for Tony Soprano. I will I will take Tony Soprano. He's dead. That's fine. <laughs> and then, because you load yours down with, like, little sweets and goodies, what is your favorite snack food? Uh, my favorite snack food, hands down, I gotta say, Cheez-Its. Um, I don't eat them too often now because I know if I open a box, I'll just, I'll just keep eating them. But, like, cheese its for sure. The Tabasco ones, specifically, because it's just, like, a weird, tangy flavor. It doesn't really taste like Tabasco. It doesn't really taste like cheese it It's its own little thing. What's the first toy that you can remember ever getting? Morning Droids gave me that one. The first toy I can remember ever getting. Um, I have very vivid memories of those old Snuggle plushies that they used to give with the, with the, like, laundry detergent. Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Back to how it's odd sometimes, like, what is, like, a toy? A freaking marketing bear. I love it, man. Yeah, it was, it, was a snug, it was a snuggle, like, bear with a little fucking blanket. Like, you would hold it. Like, it was just there. I'm like, okay. For some reason, I was obsessed with that as, like, a little itty-bitty toddler. And then what would be your dream job if you could have any job in the world? Very cliche, but probably pulling vinyl. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's very hard work and everything. There's a lot of effort involved. It's not just pulling vinyl from what I hear. You got to do wax work and all that and everything but i feel like that'd be pretty cool just because i'd be pulling toys for people i'd be you know it's just it's just bringing joy into the world in a very distinct way and that you are like just so niche it's very niche it's just between fun and it yeah. is very niche how can you do that every day nine to five wouldn't you just want to be at home sculpting yourself and making your own vinyls i mean i, I already have like a, a job you know, I I could just do the same thing where I just do it on my free time, you know? Like, it, it could work out. It's just, I don't know, I feel like I'd enjoy it. I, I, I like I like working. Uh, that's why my hobby is work. I love it, man. I love it, dude. 
you know, and like, I mean, again, like, well, where better to work than somewhere that's around what you love anyways? Plus, think of all the dope sculpts you get to see come in. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's going to be, that, that's like a thing that just seems so cool. Just like someone hitting you up and then you see what they have to offer when it comes to like uh, a different version of what you thought like could only be done in vinyl or something. It's just like a different like view of what they want produced and everything. And then you're like, oh shit, this is completely different from what all these other people do. Like all these other people are getting their toys pulled. It's just it's its own little thing. It's just really fun. Really cool. Did you... Um collect vinyl soft vinyl before you got into making soft vinyl honestly on, on collector standards i'm like a fucking i'm a baby it, it's maybe like three four years now um because i followed an artist called uh, mushba or something they did a lot of digital art and the first toy i ever bought i think it was like one of those rare boys by science patrols it was in a in a marble and then the second toy i bought was a grease bat from uh it was like a little micro grease bat from uh, Rampage. It was like a confetti grease bat, so it had like cut up vinyl inside of it. It was really cool. And I still have those guys somewhere over there, like in the in the little case. But yeah, I haven't been around too long when it comes to collecting vinyl. That makes sense. Well, I don't want to get much more of an evening here. Is there anything that you kind of wanted to talk to us about or let us know about coming up or going on that you've got in the works? Um. I guess just just keep an eye on the page for more uh, Monstro Sorpresa drops and future things such as uh, uh, I, I got like a little Keshi Gacha thing planned um, and some more vinyl maybe God willing like later this year next year maybe we'll see. I love it, man. Well, thank you yeah. so much. I mean, you packed this box down again. I can't stress enough. Like so much candy and blinged out rings man and then your art on top of that is freaking phenomenal i really 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 appreciate everything dude and even coming in and giving me your time and explaining what the heck's going on to my simple brain i, I love it dude thank no you. no i appreciate i appreciate you having me on thanks for asking it was it was very fun no, no, no. try and have a great rest of your sunday man all right you too <laughs>